Hi, kids. Today we're gonna pop off the valve cover gasket and check these valves on the Honda Element. I have never checked this. I've owned this car almost three years and I've never done the valve adjustment. It's pushing 300,000 miles and given the state of a lot of things on this car, I suspect it's probably never been adjusted. Uh, last year I replaced one of the heads in the Odyssey because it burned a valve. And I'm starting to suspect that that was because of bad valve adjustment. When I went through there, a lot of the exhaust valves were tight. I'm told that that's a common thing on Hondas. So let's open this up and check it. If it's good, we'll just close it back up. If it's not good, we'll adjust everything. This is a Felpro gasket set. Uh, it comes with the spark plug gaskets and uh, little washers and, and a valve cover gasket. I'm a big fan of Felpro. They haven't let me down so far. Start at the start. I like to remove this particular hose bracket over here. And you can actually pop that hose out without taking the bracket off, but why not? Now right, that kind of gets that up out of the way. So we're gonna use a 10 millimeter. That's a 10 millimeter. Most of this stuff is gonna be 10 millimeter. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter kind of day. Bucket. Extremely important, utterly useless plastic cover. Ugh. Get the amount of crud on that. Wow. You think that's ever been removed? You think that's ever been changed? That's probably from years of filling the oil and having it leak down in here. Or it may be because the valve cover gas gets blown. Either way, we're gonna clean all this crap up. Good grief. Next, I wanna unhook some of these hoses. Grab the rest of these, one, two, three, four, that hold this cover on. Strange bolt, don't lose these. Fuck it. So these two bolts not only hold the cover on, but they hold these coil packs in. Coil pack bolt in the bucket, don't lose it. And remember that there's only two of those. The other two are those cover bolts. So that can get a little confusing when you're putting things back together. And you start looking for all four of your coil pack bolts and you realize you've only got two of them. Dipstick. One, two, three, four. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Pull these coil packs. How's that look? It's had a little water down in there. Not surprising. Doesn't look bad though. Looks good. Next is the Duralast that I put in a little while ago. Again, looks a little wet, but not bad. We don't have to keep these in order. They're coil packs, they're all the same. Doesn't matter which one goes back in which hole. That one's dry. Looks good. And the last one, also dry and looking really good. All right. Now let's get this wiring harnessy thing up out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna pull this hose so that I can get that further back out of the way. I don't really think I need to, but it'll make my life a little easier. Just a vacuum line. Pop that off, stick that back there, go back there. That kind of helps hold it back out of the way. Bungee cord, an essential tool. Grab these 10 millimeter. There are what, six of these, five of these, five of these, six of these. One, two, three on the front, one in the middle, two in the back. This is a little 10 millimeter that holds all this uh, bracket stuff. So let's take those two loose, push this over out of the way.
Lots of 10 millimeters today. See, these come in different types. This one's the hooky, this one's the pokey. That's their technical name, hooky and pokey. There's one of those. I've got new ones. Let's take a look. Very oil soaked. Still kind of pliable. You could, eh, eh, it's cracked. I'm not gonna reuse these. You really, you, in a real bind, you could reuse this, but why bother? That one. Yeah, these are crunchy. Ooh, uh, metal came off, but the rubber didn't. Crunchy. It's the last one. These things are hard and chunky. I suspect the valve cover gasket is as crunchy as those uh, those bolt seals. Let's employ the great big screwdriver. Get down here on the head. there we go it's just stuck all right before i take this off and give you the big reveal i expect to see a very dirty bunch of cams in here and i'm hoping i don't see a bunch of wear on the cam lobes so let's see what we got how horrifying is this the inside of our valve cover um, with a car with 300,000 miles I mean I've seen worse it's not that bad let us take a look at this valve cover though gasket it's, uh, it's hard but it's not again it's not the worst oh yeah look at that once you start digging into it, you really see how crunchy that is. See here? Crunch, 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 crunch. It's just coming apart. So, yeah. Now let's take a look at these cam lobes. valve cover mates to the head. I'm gonna go ahead and try and clean that just a little bit so I don't run crud up inside my motor. The inside of the motor looks better than I thought it would. I was kind of worried that I would see some bad cam wear. To turn our system over, we're gonna use this. This is a 19 millimeter, and we're gonna put it on the power steering pump and run it all around. That's how our cams go. So I'm gonna start by doing the intake valves first. That's the front side here. And I'm using these two gauges. It's a 0 0.305 millimeter and a 0.229. And I get these numbers right here. See that? That's what your adjustment should be. I've seen some other numbers given online for a valve adjustment, but uh, I'm gonna go with what the Honda printed under the hood of my car. You could do this a couple different ways. Uh, the Eric the car guy has a good video on how to do this. And I tend to follow a very similar method from him, which is that on the intake, I like to have the cam lobe pointed up. Then you pull up on this rocker, that's what I do anyway, and slide my feeler gauge in. And you should just feel a slight drag on that. Feel a little too much drag. Take my 10 millimeter, crack that nut loose. Then we take a screwdriver and adjust it. 
to where it's just got a little, and this is hard to describe, but you're doing this by feel, where it's just got a little drag. Quiet, Albie. That's pretty good right there. It's difficult to explain, but that's, uh, that's how you do it. Too loose. There we go. All right, now with that in place, tighten it back up. Now let's check it again. Yeah, that's just exactly the way I like it. Now I want to roll this where this cam is pointed up. That's pretty well perfect. All right, that's intake cylinder number one. Let's move on to number two. Now let's do the exhaust. You can hear that gap. So going with a 0 0.30 on the exhaust valves. There's two exhaust valves. And typically with the Hondas, they can get a little tight. Yeah, that is tight. Too tight for my feeler gauge. So when they're too tight like that, what I'll do is break that nut loose, back it off. Now we screw it back down until we get a little, got a little pressure on it. Not a lot. Yeah, that's pretty good. To make a little tool for this, Honda does. It should probably be handy. I should get one someday. And that's how you do it. To the next one. Those valves are all going to be tight. I'm told that's typical of these. And of course, if it goes too tight, then you're not getting a good compression eventually. Right, got a little drag on there. That's where I like it. And that's how we'll tighten it. I am showing a little bit of grind. See that? There's a little scoring, a little pitting on the exhaust valve. The exhaust valves are all showing pretty tight. That's very tight. Watch this cam lobe when it comes around. You start to see some abrasion, some scoring on there. A little bit, not, not anything to be worried about. As we get up on top of the lobe, you can, you can feel a little bit more. It's got a little bit of wear and a little bit of a ridge right there. So there is some wear on that cam lobe. I'll have to keep an eye on that. I'm going to go ahead and continue across the rest of the motor. Once all the valves are adjusted, it's time to start putting the gasket back in. Gunk, Gunk is a fairly standard old school engine degreaser. Alrighty, Taddy Waddy. I'm going to show you how I get these seals out of here. We have some new ones that came with our kit. That is a three-quarter wrench. I'm sure a number of other wrenches will do just fine. That 
that's how that comes out. Three. So these are the new ones. They've got a little metal metal ring built into this. You can kind of feel it. It's going to be pressed into this gap. And honestly, I can just press them with my thumbs usually. Once this gets baked in real hard, it'll be much harder to get out. I want to clean this up because I got crud down in this channel. That's not good. And here's our gasket. We'll try and lay this out and see how it go. How do it go? Let's start by laying this out, figuring out what sort of shape it's in. So see this notch here? That goes there, don't you think? I think it does. So, let's start there. Work our way around. And if we come across something that looks really out of place, well then we'll have to stop and reevaluate, but it looks pretty good so far. She get you all figured out? Oh yeah, we had a good visit too. <laughs> now let's put it on. This gets a little wonky because it's kind of got to go in under that power steering um, hose, but also over those studs, but not messing up the gasket, see? So it's a bit of a three-fingered maneuver here. Not too tricky though. All right, there goes that. These are paint flakes coming off of this. Uh, the paint was already in bad shape and I think splashing it with gunk was probably a death nail for it. But whatever, I'll probably get one of those nice, cute, fancy painted ones here soon. That'll look cool. All right, so there's our, there's our valve cover back in place. Not really looking very good, but it is what it is, yeah. Next piece of the puzzle coming out of the Felpro kit are these hold down washer things. I don't know what you call these. They're pretty common. I've seen them on Toyotas, Hondas, all kinds of stuff. But just to be stupid and have a little fun, I've pulled the rubber gasket out of this and look what I got. Uh, this is the biggest cheese ball thing I can come up with. Now, doesn't that just scream ricer horsepower? That's just awesome. You can go ahead and put in this next set of rubber grommets that also came with our kit. These go right here. And these are new seals for your coil packs. Four of them in the kit. Pretty good little kit. Now, the gaskets that are already on our coal packs are still in good shape, but let's go ahead and swap them anyway. Pull that down. Pull the old coil. And that should keep water from getting down in there like we were seeing on some of those other ones. There's two. Let's go ahead and try and line these up fairly well and put our cover back on. No, wait. Instead, let's put the stupid 
Yeah, let's do this first. How about that? Uh, that would make more sense. One. Two. Now the dipstick goes in. I'll try and put some of these brackets and whatnot, hoses and all that back in. system or something same with this hose back here what's left anything these nuts are not fancy enough for me I'm fancier than this so I went ahead and made an executive decision to fancy them up a little more shut up don't kink chain me look at that i'm fancier than these damn things so this is torque wrench an actual torque wrench some morons will call an impact a torque wrench we want to set this to about 12 newt meters to tighten these down there's also a proper tightening sequence for these little nuts and uh, it looks like this Might as well put some on the old plastic cover while we're at it. And there's one last thing I want to put on here. Finally going to gain back some of that horsepower I've been missing. Apologize to everyone who's had to suffer through my videos with this missing piece. Ordered this off of eBay. Ah, now we are complete. So much rice or cheese going on here. That's really it, kids. It's not that difficult to adjust your own valves. Make sure you've got a new valve cover gasket before you start. And be prepared to spend a little time on this and pay some attention to detail. That's really what this job is all about. You don't see me going into a lot of detail on the videos on this channel, but if you're not gonna pay attention to detail and give this job the time that it requires to do it, don't even start. 
do not take that valve cover off if you're not going to meticulously check these clearances and make sure you've got your cam lobes adjusted to the proper spot. It's not hard to do. You just have to pay attention. Don't expect a big performance gain after you adjust these. If your motor is in halfway decent shape and running decent when you start this job, you won't notice a big difference when you get done. This is more about preventive maintenance. We want to make sure that your valves stay healthy for a long time. It's just like checking the tire pressure on your tires. It's not something that you should find way out of whack, but if it gets way out of whack, you're going to find it. This car, I have no reason to suspect this car has ever had a valve adjustment and it was pretty close to being in spec. The valves on the exhaust side were a little bit tight, so I loosened them a little bit. Uh, I, I adjusted all of the exhaust valves. I only adjusted one of the intake valves and I'm really not noticing a big difference in performance and I didn't expect to. Adjusting your valves is just to make sure that your motor is healthy. You can do this, I promise.